there's enough for one magnet for each table. Please keep all these keeper bars. When the magnets are stored back in their case, you put opposite poles near each other, and the keeper bars allow this magnet to keep its field strength longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass a magnet um, north in first, and we're going to pass it south in first through this tube. You're not going to see the top of the tube right now, but we can just drop it through, and someone has to put their hand below and catch it. It's very important that you don't catch it with your hand really close because the magnet cannot clear through the coil um, far enough. So you're just going to have to put your hand further down and catch it. Please do not allow these to hit the table. They're neodymium and they do crack. Uh, they're very, very expensive. Um, you're going to drop it from different heights by placing the wooden dowel at the different holes. So you're going to put it at different holes and you're going to allow the magnet to drop at those different heights. So just pull out the pole and down it drops. I know it's really high tech. Um, we spent a lot of money on this setup. All right. Drop it from different heights with like poles. Just look at the Excel template to get what you're supposed to do. At one point it asks you to hold the magnet still inside the coil. So I just put it up inside the coil and I don't let it move and we record a run. Record another run with no magnet. Just keep the magnet away and do another run. Please do not get these magnets close to the computer monitors. And a lot of students have fun doing things like this. And yes, we do encourage you to um, mess around after you have your data. So suspend two magnets with like poles and drop it through and see what it looks like. And then drop them through with opposite poles and see what the computer trace looks like. It's pretty interesting.